Hello everyone. Good morning. Welcome to GCF Northeast online service. Thank you for joining us. And next Sunday, it's our first face-to-face or in-person worship service after the lockdown. Are you excited? Praise God. But we have to follow still uh, strict health protocols. And uh, you have to register. Now, those who will be joining us 15 years old and above, vaccinated or and va- unvaccinated. So you have to register because it is on a first-come, first-served basis. Only about less than 50 seats available. Guidelines will be posted and I hope that you'll be guided accordingly. If you have any inquiries, you can ask our ministry assistant. You can call him, text him, our brother, Haniel Sales. Praise the Lord. And you know, we have already started the prayer chain, praying for uh, our national elections. But you can still join us. Please, uh, remember this, pray for our national elections. Whatever time of the day, just pray for a peaceful, orderly, honest elections. And that God, that God will thwart any evil plan of the enemy to discredit the, the uh, results of the uh, election and also for the voters to exercise their right to vote with wisdom and discernment. And so we continue our study uh, uh, in the Gospel of John and we are in chapter 14. Do you feel uncomfortable when you don't hear the, the phrase in Jesus' name at the end of someone's prayer. Di ba sanay na sanay tayo na kapag tayo nananalangin ang pagtatapos noon ay in Jesus' name o sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Subalit, kung ito po ay hindi nyo naririnig, do you feel uneasy? Meron po kayo bang nasasabi na parang kulang yung prayer? Aabot ba yun sa langit? Di po ba? Well, uh, one part of that insight is correct. True Christian praying is always in the name of Jesus. If we deliberately drop the name of Jesus, then our prayers can hardly be called Christian at all. So there is a sense that every prayer that we should pray should be offered in the name of Jesus. But that still doesn't answer or tell us what it means to pray in Jesus' name. What does it really mean to pray in Jesus' name. And so today we um, come to the words of the Lord Jesus in John chapter 14, verses 13 to 14. I'm reading from the Nas B. Please follow along as I read our text. Verse 13, And whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All people are like grass and their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord endures forever. Let us pray. Our gracious, loving Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus our Savior and Lord. And I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts would be pleasing and acceptable to you. However, we come this morning, O God, we need you and we need you to come after us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, one observation I notice that people are sometimes careless in their public praying. A uh, prayer will be addressed to God, presumably and explicitly to God the Father, right? But they conclude their prayer uh, with this, in your name. No, we, we don't pray in the Father's name. We are taught to pray in Jesus' name, okay? So it is important to remember what it means to pray in Jesus' name. At first glance and without context, 
the passage that we've read this morning seems to be a ticket to life's pleasure and uh, uh, fulfillment, success, happiness, right? If you look at it, the verses are, uh, have an amazing promise, wonderful, awesome promise. But most often, we read it with, uh, uh, without careful thought of the context. And we are so captivated and seized by the possibilities of the word anything. Diba? Look at the promise. Ask me anything. I will do it. If you pray it in my name. That's what the Lord Jesus said. And shallow and immature Christians leap out and say, wow, that's a wonderful promise. Now I can buy the latest gadget that I want. I can travel abroad. I can go to different places. I'll just pray that in Jesus' name. Right? This we ask in Jesus' name is like a magical formula that is attached to the end of the prayer. It's just like rubbing. Aladdin's lamp and the genie of God suddenly appears and does whatever you like. Your wish is my command. Parang ganun ang tingin nila. But we must remember what Apostle James says. You ask and do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives so that you may spend what you request on your pleasures. James chapter 4 verse 3. Praying in Jesus' name means more than simply adding a phrase at the end of your prayers. Now, let me give you a Bible trivia. Basahin niyo po lahat ang prayers, mga panalangin sa bagong tipan. Wala ni isa ang nag-end sa pangalan ni Jesus. Wala ni isa ang nag-end in Jesus' name. Now, we know that those prayers were being offered according to the promise of our text. And so that tells us that this promise deals with, with much more than saying a few words and ending with amen. I have no objection, brethren, to people adding this phrase at the end of their prayers. But there are many prayers that concluded with that phrase in Jesus' name, but not prayed in the name. Of Jesus at all. What then does this mean in Jesus' name? What do verses 13 to 14 mean? Now, to understand the basic meaning of the general outline of this thought, it, we have to understand it in the larger section. We must look at the general outline of uh, this passage. Remember, in the beginning of John 14, Jesus tells his disciples that he's going to the Father in order to prepare a place for them. And then one of the disciples asks, oh, how can we go there? Uh, oh, how, how can we know the way? And Jesus responds with this, the famous statement, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then he tells them that he is the only way that they can reach the Father, and he tells them that seeing him and knowing him is also seeing and knowing the Father. And so the conversation shifts uh, to this important truth. To see Jesus is to see the Father. And then he begins to, to, to explain the implication of that statement. He means that he doesn't speak with his own authority, but he uh, does what the Father tells him to do. And then we get to the statement in verse 12, the passage that we studied last Sunday, and where Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you. You know what Jesus is saying there? You know, what I'm going to tell you, is telling the disciples, is really, really true. So you have to listen carefully. Pay careful attention to what I'm going to say. And then he continues that whoever believes in him, the works that he does, he will do. Even greater works he will do. Because, Jesus says, I am going 
to the Father. In other words, whoever believes in Him, now we uh, qualify that. Remember, we defined that uh, whoever uh, who is a true believer, a true believer, you know, hindi po siya nagsasabi na siya ay Kristiyano, pero hindi mo nakikita sa kanyang gawa. No? A true believer grows in his love and pursuit of holiness. And so, whoever believes in him will do the works of Jesus, even greater works than Jesus did. Now, these greater works, brothers and sisters in Christ, my friends, is not in terms of quality and worth that comes from the disciples themselves, but it has to do with the last line of what Jesus said, because I am going to the Father. When Jesus went to the Father uh, after his death, resurrection, and ascension to heaven, the fulfillment of the work that God the Father has asked him to do was already completed and revealed. So the greater reality of that power in the name of the reason and exalted Savior, brothers and sisters in Christ, is now evident in the world and also experienced by his followers. Not only that, but the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead indwells in the lives of his followers. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 11, But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. However, that Spirit would, couldn't come to them until Jesus went to the Father. John chapter 16, verse 7. However, but I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I am living. For if I do not leave, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go... I will send him to you. So in a sense, brethren, the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ makes them more powerful because the Spirit indwells in them. All that said, we now understand that a genuine Christian, a one, the one who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, accepts him as Savior and Lord, will do the works of Jesus the greater works, which is making disciples because of the fulfillment of the gospel and the fact that the Spirit dwells in them. These greater works, mind you, are not for the glory of the Christian. It is just simply and powerfully a continuation of the works of Jesus which are actually the works of the Father and ultimately for the glory of the Father. So now we come to verses 13 and 14. Allow me to read them again. And whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. It is interesting to notice that the Lord tells them that He will answer their prayers. And in verse 14, He tells them to ask. You see, if you ask me anything, here again we are taught, brothers and sisters in Christ, my friends, that a prayer is not only addressed to the Father, it can also be addressed to the Son. The Bible does not reflect or never reflects on why we might pray to the Father or pray to the Son. Okay? The Bible never, never uh, suggests that certain kinds, may mga iba't ibang prayer na dapat sa ama lang o dapat sa anak o dapat sa spirito. Wala pong suggestion na ganon ang Biblia. Well, uh, I'm, I'm saying this because there are times I encounter questions, kanina ba dapat kami magpipray? Sa ama lang? O sa, pwede ba sa anak? O pwede ba sa spiritual? Here is an example that we can pray directly to the Son. 
to Jesus Christ. But again, here we see twice. We are told that we are to ask to pray in Jesus' name. Okay, lest we miss the importance of this condition, tignan po natin the, the, the teachings doon sa upper room. Okay, in uh, John 15, 16, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you would go and bear fruit and that your fruit would remain so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give to you. And in John 16, 23, 24, and on that day you will not question me about anything. Truly, truly, I say to you, if you ask the Father for anything in my name, he will give it to you. Until now, you have asked for nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive so that your joy may be made full. And then we have that also in Matthew 18, 19. Again, I say to you that if two or of you agree on earth about anything that they may ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. Now, all of these assertions concern the confidence with which law we should pray. They promise that we will receive what we ask for. But what is the significance of the phrase in Jesus' name in these promises of the Lord that He will deal, that He will hear our prayers? Now, di po ba ang mga mananampalatea, most of us think that to pray in Christ's name simply means that we offer our prayers to Jesus Christ. That is to acknowledge that we have access to God through Jesus Christ, only through Jesus Christ, and that we are to confess that fact when we pray. Kaya po tayo nagkaroon ng pagkakataon na makalapit sa Diyos ay dahil sa ating Panginoong Jesus. Okay? Pero tatandaan po natin ang tema ng teaching sa upper room is not how to obtain access to God, but it is in the advancing of the work of the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, after His ascension in heaven. Now, perhaps you have noticed also that purpose uh, clause in the second half of verse 13, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Now, let us look at the range of the promise. Whatever you ask, the context of whatever you ask is tied onto the works of the Lord Jesus Christ, doing the works of Jesus. Now, prayer is not a means to uh, get something from God. It is not a means of getting God to do or give us things to make our lives more comfortable. Rather, prayer is how we ask God to extend His kingdom and ask Him to do His will on earth as it is in heaven. Of course, there is a place that we ask God to meet our needs. But the central or the center of all that we pray should be, Lord, do your work through us, in us, and, and bring sinners to genuine conversion and sanctify us that we may be faithful representatives of Jesus here on earth. So in prayer, we are to submit to the will of God and ask Him to do His will in and through us and also through His people. But you see the difficulty there. Paano po na natin malalaman ang kalooban ng Diyos? Paano natin uh, malalaman upang sa ganoon ay maialign natin ang ating panalangin ayon sa kalooban ng Diyos? Remember, His will is not always obvious. You see, God denied Moses' request to enter Canaan. And he, Moses could have argued that the people needed this leadership when they entered the promised land. 
Remember Paul, he has a thorn in the flesh. How many times did he pray for God to remove that thorn? Three times, but Jesus did, God did not answer. And you know what? God has a higher purpose that, that Paul would depend on Christ for his weakness. And also, remember Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed that he'll be delivered from the cross. But he had to submit to the Father's will. So you see the tension? We should ask God to extend the gospel and do His will in and through us and glorify His name, glorify His name around the world. We should ask Him to do things far more abundantly beyond that we ask or imagine. And yet we need to understand His ways are not our ways and His thoughts are not or higher than our thoughts. You know, He sometimes puts His greatest servants to be enchained, to be flogged, to be killed for His sake. So although we don't understand why God doesn't do exactly what we ask, we should pray big prayers for His kingdom to come and His will to be done here on earth as it is in heaven. You see, the extent of that uh, uh, prayer, whatever you ask, is unlimited. And now we look at the root of the promise, in my name. As you know, a person's name uh, carried a greater weight in the ancient world than, does, than, than it does in ours. There, you see, no, uh, there, is, there, there is this greater identity between a person and his name. But of course, we have not lost this entirely. Di po ba, napansin niyo ba, pag kayo naglalakad, mayroong dalawa o tatlong tao nag-usap, narinig niyo yung pangalan niyo, hindi ba kayo magiging interesado sa kanilang pinag-uusapan? Di ba? Magiging interesado ko, hindi niyo naman sasabihin, well, pangalan ko lang naman yun, hindi naman nila ako pinag-uusapan personally. No? You, hindi po ganon, hindi po ba? You identify your name with yourself. However, in the ancient world, Okay, there was this thought to be a greater connection between a person's name and his nature, his character, his uh, being. Okay, why? Names in the Bible often represent the character, personality, origin, or destiny of different people. Jacob means cheater. Nabal means fool. Peter means rock. How about the Lord Jesus Christ? Lord means master. Jesus means savior. And Christ means uh, sent from heaven to earth. And so when you declare Jesus and you say he is the Lord Jesus Christ, you are saying that he is the master of your life. He is the savior of your life. And you acknowledge that he was sent from heaven to earth, okay? And second, names also represent authority. Uh, perhaps you recall those old crime shows where the officers knock on a door and say, open the door in the name of the law. Why? Why would they say that in the name of the law? Because the officers had no authority to compel someone to open the door. But when they say, no, in the name of the law, they were claiming uh, the full authority of the government standing behind them and backing them up. Now, we see this principle at work in that great confrontation, that battle between David and Goliath. No? And David, before the fight, 
tells Goliath where his power is coming from. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45, You come to me with a sword, a spear, and a saber, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. David was saying to Goliath, alam niya sinasabi niya, hindi ako na-impress sa laki mo, sa size mo, sa mga weapons mo, sa kasuutan mo. Ha? Hindi ako natatakot dyan. The Lord God is on my side and He's going to lay your body on the ground. And so, David claimed that God was on his side, armed with just God and a smooth stone. And he was able to kill Goliath. Third, names represent a person's reputation. And we see this clearly in reference to the name of the Lord. The very first petition in the Lord's Prayer says, Hallowed be your name. To hallow something is to treat it as being of great worth. And so you hallow God's name when you treat it with respect it deserves. To pray, therefore, in Jesus' name is to pray based on His, on who He is, with His authority, and in order that His reputation be enhanced in the world. But you must also understand that you are to pray submissively, acknowledging that you may not understand His perfect will. But you trust that if your request is in accordance to His will, He will do it no matter how difficult that is. And the goal of the promise, the Father's glory in the Son, Notice how John put this phrase in between two repeated phrases. Pinapakita doon ang kahalagahan na ito pong phrase na to. Jesus is saying that uh, He will answer prayer in His name for the glory of God. Ano man yung pinanalangin mo in His name, kung ito'y magbibigay ng kaluwalhatian doon sa Diyos Ama, through Jesus, ito ay kanyang sasagutin. Therefore, the purpose of prayer does not end with our comfort, with our protection, with our safety, with our security, with our success, with our fulfillment and happiness. No, but the glory of the Father through Jesus. And so, if a prayer is made that doesn't glorify God, Jesus won't answer that prayer. So you can see the similarity of uh, these two praying in Jesus' name and that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You cannot have one without the other. Kung nandirito yung isa, nandudun din yung isa. And therefore, saying in Jesus' name doesn't automatically provide the request ask. If a Christian's prayer is ultimately for the Father's glory, which is sometimes done unconsciously, then Jesus will happily give the request. And so our aim in prayer, brothers and sisters in Christ, should be that the Father will be glorified in His Son. And then the result of the promise. Jesus repeats this in verses 13 and 14 para hindi mo makaligtaan o mamiss. The result of our praying should be that Jesus will do it. He says, he says I will do it. Right? Oh. And this implies the deity of Christ. That God, that Jesus has the power to answer anything or whatever we ask. But this is where, now mind you, this is where it gets really difficult. Because many of our prayers, we know, 
It, it is for the extension, the advancement of the kingdom, of the gospel. We know that this will glorify the Father. For example, you are praying for the salvation of your uh, friends, right? Of your loved ones. But until now, you haven't received or you haven't seen the result. He hasn't replied yet. Tila mga pagano pa rin sila. At wala silang pagmamahal. Hindi nila kinikilala si Jesus bilang Panginoon at tagapagligtas. Hindi po ba? Hindi po ba yung panalangin na yon ay para sa kaluwalhatian ng Diyos? Or perhaps, you've been praying for a couple in kanilang marriage that they'll be reconciled. Pero nalulungkot ka parang lalo pa yatang maghihiwalay. Or many parents have prayed for their prodigal son to return to Christ and repent and be reconciled to them to honor the Father, but God hasn't replied yet. Many missionaries have labored so long for the gospel, but they haven't seen the fruit, even just one fruit, of that labor in their years of service in the mission field. And we can see the list goes on and on and on. So how do we reconcile this? Jesus seeming blanket promise to answer prayers in, in, in His name for the glory of the Father with the fact that many of our answers remain, of our prayers remain unanswered. Now, allow me to share three things. And uh, this I've learned also from several commentaries that I read. We must know the difference first. We must know the difference between God's will of desire and God's will of decree. You see, God desires all people to come to repentance and be saved. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. However, He has not decreed salvation. Of all that we see also in Second Timothy chapter one verse nine, Second Timothy chapter two verse ten, right? That is His will of desire. Masayban lahat, pero ang kanyang decree hindi po uh, ilan lang po may ilan lang siyang mga pinili. Hindi lahat masisay. God desires that we glorify Him by living a holy life. And yet He permits sin, He allows sin, and then be glorified in the righteous judgment of the sinner who does not repent. And so, ano po yung prayer natin? Of course, we have to know His will, His, uh, uh, God's will of desire. So pray for that. But we must also accept and submit the, to the fact that we don't know His will of decree. We don't know His will of decree. Second, Jesus promised to do whatever we ask does not weaken and challenge the many scriptures that encourage us to wait on the Lord. Diba? Jesus doesn't say, when will He do it? If you ask anything in my name, I will do it immediately. No, He didn't say that. In fact, God may be glorified as we faithfully wait on Him. For answers to our prayers. He may be glorified by answering our prayers at a distant time. Sometimes even beyond our lifetimes. For reasons that we don't know, for that we cannot understand, that we cannot fathom now. Of course, God's purposes will be fulfilled, but not necessarily in our own timing and in the way that we envision it. And lastly, God often fulfills His purposes in ways that seem backward to us. We pray that the gospel will spread, but He sends persecution, like in the book of Acts. Right? We pray that He will strengthen us, but instead He gives us weakness. He makes us weak, so that we will fully depend on His strength. In, uh, in, in that upper room discourse, 
there's an interesting story there in Luke 22. Jesus told Peter that Satan had demanded permission to sip him like wheat, but that Jesus had prayed for Peter. Kung kayo po yon, ano po ang inyong ipapanalangin? Di po ba sana hindi mahulog si Peter? Sana hindi niya i-deny si Jesus? But what was the prayer of Jesus? No, hindi niya sinabing that he would, Peter would be spared from denying him. No, Jesus did not pray that. He prayed that after Peter would be restored, he will strengthen the brothers. And so, if a Christian is praying in Jesus' name with a desire, you know, and he desires the glory of God through it, yet he doesn't see evidence of answer to that prayer, it doesn't mean that he was not genuine in his prayer. It just, it just means that God will answer that prayer later. He will give the request later. For example, pwede ba yon? Oh, you pray for the second coming. Hindi pa, hindi pa niya sinasagot, but surely he will answer it. Okay? So, ano po ang application nito sa atin? One, it should fill our prayers with praise. Instead of always uh, praying, give me prayers, but uh, there, uh, mind you, all right, that there is, there, there is nothing wrong no, with the give me prayers. But we should focus on the praise and thanksgiving to God because through Christ, we are given access to the uh, throne room of the universe. By grace and grace alone, we are brought, we have been brought into the presence of God. Pangalawa, it should drive us back to the Word. Hindi po ba? Paano natin malalaman ang kalooban ng Diyos? Paano na natin malalaman ang mga priorities ng Diyos? Hindi po ba ito'y hindi lamang sa pagbabasa, kundi sa pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos? Tingnan niyo po ang mga taong malalim sa kanilang mga panalangin. Sila din ay malalim. Ito'y mga lalaki at mga babae na malalim sa salita ng Diyos. Brothers and sisters in Christ, friends, Fill your heart with the Word of God and soon your prayers will reflect the priorities of God. And that is the true meaning of Psalm 37 verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. And lastly, it should deepen our sense of total dependence on Christ. We pray in Jesus' name precisely because our own name carries no weight with the Almighty. Kapag tayo po ay hubarap sa Diyos, uh, tayo ay balot ng ating maruming basahan, ng ating self-righteousness. At kung tayo po ay haharap ng ganito, mga kapatid, hindi po papasok sa pintuan ng langit ang ating mga dalangin. And so it is good to remember that apart from God, there is nothing good in any of us to commend ourselves to God. And so our passage this morning is a call not only to come to Him in prayer, but it is also a call, a reminder to us in His name, to us in Jesus' name. That is not just saying in Jesus' name, amen, at the end of our prayers, but asking ultimately that God will, uh, uh, that His kingdom will come and that He will do His will on earth as it is in heaven. And so it is all about the glory of God. The focus of our prayers should ultimately be about the glory of God and not on our comfort and not on our happiness. Remember, the way that God has been glorified or was glorified was through the death of His Son. And so if you ask anything in my name, I will do it, is not a blanket statement of how we can get whatever we want, but it is a statement to tell us how 
we should approach prayer and our walk with God. May we look to Jesus, brethren, who opens the door so we can pray to God and look for His kingdom to come, seeking for His glory and not our own. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Lord, do your work to us through GCF North East. Please bring sinners into genuine conversion and sanctify all of us so that we'll be faithful representatives of Jesus Christ here on earth. Amen and amen.